Prita, am I audible? Yes, yes sir. Okay. Right? Can I have a textbook? Okay. Right. So, shall we get started? Okay. Listen. So we have completed the first four chapters, right? What were they? So six relation and function. Then we saw trigonometric functions and complex numbers, right? So now we'll get started with the next chapter that is linear inequalities. Okay. See, this I've already explained it in the relations and functions when you're calculating the range and domain of a function. Right Now, we are going to learn the same chapter a little bit in a detail. That's it. Right. As the name suggests, here when I talk about linear, right, what do you mean by linear here? So, if you take the variable that is being considered in a particular problem, if you take x, y, z, whatever you take, the power of that variable is going to be 1. Right. See, for example, in your lower grades, you would have learned like this 4x plus 2y is equal to 5. Right. Even before that, you would have learned something like this. Let's say 4x is equal to 3. What is this called as? It is called as a linear equation. But you add a you add a prefix to it. What do you in one variable? Yes. It is a linear equation in one variable. So here the variable is going to be the deciding factor to say how many such equations you need to solve a problem. If it is a linear equation and one variable, how many equations do you need? One equation is enough to solve. See, for example, in this case, x is equal to 4 by 3 is the answer. Whereas in the second case, if you observe, 4x plus 2y is equal to 5. So it is a linear equation in two variables. It's a linear equation in Two variables. So it is going to be linear equation in two variables. How many linear equations are needed for you to solve? So you need two linear equations to solve. So for example, 2x plus 3y is equal to 7. If I have these two, if you solve them simultaneously, then you will be able to find the value of x and y. So that value of x and y is what we call it as solution. Can I say that? Did you understand what is the meaning of it? So, if I ask you to find the solution of a linear equation, solution for linear equation in two variables, what are we supposed to do? You need to solve them simultaneously. The value of x and y that comes out is going to be the solution of it. In a similar way, is there a possibility where I can define something like this 4x plus 3y plus z is equal to 10? Can I call this as a linear equation? Yes, we can call it. But you would say it's a linear equation in three variables. So how many equations do you need? Three equations to solve it. Okay. So this is all about linear equations. The chapter that we are going to discuss now has something to do with inequality. In the sense, instead of me having a question of 4x is equal to 3, where x is going to give me a value of how much? So how many values does x take in this case? It takes one value. Whereas 
if i change this equation to inequality when i say inequality there are four kinds of inequalities you can consider one is strictly greater than strictly less than greater than or equal to less than or equal to. so having said this what i can do is see for example if i change the same equation to this kind of a format now if i ask you how many values does x take the answer will be infinite number of values so just by me changing the equality to this inequality right what has happened the number of solutions has completely changed so when i say 4x is greater than 3 you are trying to say x is greater than 3 by 4 meaning if you take any value of x greater than 3 by 4 which is 0.75 and substitute it in this it will definitely be greater than 3 so like this you have infinite number of solutions am i clear with this right okay so in this chapter what we are going to learn is how to deal with these kind of inequalities and find the solutions of it all that you need to do is you need to find the solution in the form of x greater than or you write it in the form of x belongs to this sum see for example here can i write x belongs to 3 by 4 to infinity this is what we have learned in relations so we have learned about open bracket and close bracket that's the same logic is it clear whereas when we dealt with relations we dealt with linear equations as well as quadratic also here we will be strictly restricting ourselves only to degree 1 degree in the sense power be 1 for the variable that's it. so having said that this is a very very simple chapter it's a very simple chapter so let's see how to deal with the problems let's look at the concept shall i proceed right. so i hope you understood the introduction right so when it comes to inequalities let's say there is a problem statement given like this what are they saying ravi goes to market with rupees 200 to buy rice which is available in packets of 1 kg right so the price of one packet of rice is rupees 30 if x denotes the number of packets of rice which he buys then the total amount spent by him is going to be how much see one packet cost is 30 he is buying x packet so cost is going to be 30x right so it is going to be 30x now the question is what is the limitation he has what is the restriction he has he has only 200 rupees so what is the cost of each rice packet it is 30 rupees is 30 a multiple of 200 no right so it's not a multiple of 200 so what he needs to do is he is going to by x number of packets where each packet cost 30 rupees so what is the mathematical equation that we can follow so 30x should definitely be a number less than the amount he has in his hand which is 200 is the point clear had it been a multiple you could have written equal to had it been a factor of 200 30 is not a factor of 200 right so what will you answer here what will the answer be x will be less than 200 by 3 what is the meaning of it what is 200 by 3 60 point sorry sorry 30 yeah 200 divided by 30 it is going to be 6.6666 so he cannot buy that 0.6667 packet so the number of packets he can buy is either 6 or less than 6 i hope you understood this problem statement how it can be dealt with the help of mathematics that is with the help of linear inequalities i hope you could understand no? this is one way of solving it where you yourself frame the inequality and then find out the value of x did you understand right so let's look at another problem statement reshma has 120 rupees and wants to buy some registers and pens the cost of one register is 40 rupees and that of a pen is 20 rupees right in this case x denotes the number of registers and y denotes the number of pens because there are two objects right those two objects can be bought in any permutation combination of numbers but the limitation here is 120 rupees is what she has right so x denotes the number of registers and y denotes the number of pens which reshma buys then the total amount spent by her is going to be how much x registers is what she is buying what is the cost of each register 40 so 40x and and in the sense plus so y pens is what she is buying but Excuse the cost me, of sir. each pen is going to be 
20 uh, yeah um so your um, your screen is you are not presenting the um, so? i can't see hmm. oh is it better now yes now i understand So, 40x plus 20y should be less than, in this case, what will happen is, it will be less than or equal to 120. Why? Because both are factors of 120. Whereas in the previous case, it was not the scenario. So, had it been 20, you could have written 20x is less than or equal to 20. Right. So 40x plus 2y and we can write 40x plus 2y is going to be less than or equal to 120. Did you understand when to use equal to symbol and when not to use? Yes. Right. So in this case, both are seeming to be the factor. Right. Or see, see that's not the case. I'm sorry. Correction. Even if one of the things is not a factor, you can still write it because but so question is, is she really wanting to buy both or she wants to buy only one also? That's up to her choice. See, here the question is slightly ambiguous. Okay. So I am assuming that according to the statement they give, she wants to buy some registers and sometimes I'm assuming that she is not planning to buy any, drop any of them. So in this case, it is fortunately matching. So we wrote it as equal. So when it comes to the problem, they need to be specific. See, mostly it will not be like you will be framing the equations or the inequalities. They'll give you, we need to solve it. But I hope you could understand this. Right. So these two are your textbook examples only. Okay. So you can just listen to the next problem statement also. So listen. Since here it is observed. Since in this case, in which case, in the second case, the total amount spent may be up to 120. Note that from statement to consists of two statements. What can you write? 40x plus 20y is less than or equal is less than 120. That can be one of the statements. And 40x plus 20y is equal to 120 is also possible. So that is why I wrote less than or equal to. So if you break it into two scenarios, you can frame an inequality and you can frame an equation. Right. So since statement three is not an equation, that is, it is not an inequality. What what are they trying to say? While statement four is going to be an equation. So to just put it simple, right? So just put it simple. In this case, when you write less than or equal to, it can always be broken into two scenarios. Right? Less than or because it is or only, you broke it into two parts. I hope you are able to understand this. Right? This is a very simple logic. Clear with this? Right. So do you want to make a note or shall I proceed? Shall I proceed? So having said that. Let us see what is going to be the definition of linear inequalities, right? Two real numbers or two algebraic expressions. So what is happening? Two real numbers or two algebraic expressions related by the symbol strictly less than, strictly greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to form and Inequality. It is not linear inequality. Why is it not linear inequality? Because if real numbers are going to come, you cannot call it as linear or something. See, for example, three is great. Uh, three is greater than two. This is what you call it as inequality between two real numbers. So that's what the first point says. Am I clear with that? Right. So two real numbers or two algebraic expressions that are related by these four symbols. These are the four symbols that we are going to have in our mind. Based on that only, we are going to solve the problems. Okay. So they form inequalities. So having said that, from the statements that are given previously, one, two, three, all are inequalities. Okay. Now, if you observe, three is less than pi, seven is greater than pi. These are all the examples of something called as numerical inequalities. Whereas if you say X is less than pi, Use one side variable, one side a real number. X is less than 5, Y is greater than 2, X is greater than or equal to 3. Y is less than or equal to 4 are some examples of literal inequalities. Okay. 
So you can make a note of this point. Shall I proceed? Yeah. See, now the next question is about we understood how the linear inequalities are going to look like, right? Whenever they give you a linear equation or linear inequality, or for that matter, any equation quadratic equation, complex number, everything, we are going to find a solution. So when you're going to find a solution, there should be a specific approach on how you're going to solve. So here the approach that we can follow is, one is using the direct algebraic application or graphical approach. So what can we do? When linear inequalities are given to you, you can either solve it with the help of direct algebra or you will go with algebra, you will go with graphical method of solving. Okay. So first we will see the algebraic solution. Okay. Algebraic solutions of linear inequalities in one variable, graphical representation we'll discuss next. So shall I proceed with this? So there are two rules that you need to, that you can follow when there is an inequality, right? That is given to you. There are two rules that you can follow. Let's start with an example. If suppose I have x to be greater than 5, right? If I have x to be greater than 5, rule number one says you are allowed to add or subtract. You are allowed to add or subtract the same number on both sides of the inequality. So equal numbers may be added to or subtracted on both sides of an inequality without affecting the sign of inequality. Means if x is greater than 5, if I want to add a number 3, then if I add 3 on both the sides, then the sign of the inequality is not disturbed. So if I say x is greater than 5, x plus 3 will also be greater than 5 plus 3, that is 8. Where is the sound coming from? So did you understand the rule number one? Say so they give you the inequality, you can add or subtract, meaning if x is greater than 5, x minus 3 will also be greater than 5 minus 3. If you add the same number or if you subtract the same number, what will not change? The sign of the inequality is undisturbed. It is not disturbed. Okay. Second is both sides of an inequality. So here we finish with addition and subtraction. Basic algebraic operations are four. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So first one speaks about addition, subtraction. Second speaks about multiplication or division. So this is where we need to be careful. Listen to this. Both sides of an inequality can be multiplied or divided by the same positive number. 
meaning if x is greater than 5 if i multiply with 3 on both the sides then 3x is greater than 3 into 5 which is 15 so that is 3x is greater than 15 or what i can do is i can divide it with the positive number x by 3 will be greater than 5 by 3 it is undisturbed so what will happen in this scenario is the inequality is the sign of the inequality will not change whereas if you multiply or divide it with a negative number the sign of the inequality will change if you remember i mentioned this in relations and functions right so if x is greater than 5 if i multiply with minus 1 on both the sides minus x minus 5 but the thing is greater than will become less than reason is very simple okay if you take a number line 0 1 2 3 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 okay if i look at this case can i say that 3 is greater than 2 if i multiply with minus 1 on both the sides then what will i get minus 3 minus 2 minus 3 will be less than minus 2 because minus 3 is on the left of minus 2 so that is the reason why this is happening you're able to understand so this is another important point that you need to keep in your mind so what will happen when you multiply on both sides multiply or divide it with the negative number on both the sides then sign of the inequality is going to get reversed okay so make a note of this In your 12th standard, you learn a chapter called as linear program. Linear programming and over a chapter. Okay, and that is in your uh, 12th standard, the second volume, 12th chapter. Probability report of Nadi chapter. Linear, uh, linear uh, programming. For the question, you can easily. Speak. So, and the concept comes from this one. So I told you about the graphical representation. No? For graphical representation, you need two inequalities with which you need to draw it on a graph sheet and shade certain portions. But I just checked your book, it is deleted. No, so they have deleted. The important things they have deleted. But no worries, I can explain that. It will not take more than 10 minutes for time. I'll explain it. Okay. So it is only 5.1 is there, which will not take much time for us to show. So did you understand this one? Right. Shall we proceed?
okay see the theory that is needed for the chapter is over and we need to concentrate only on problems so i'll start with example 1 and it is at page 92 of your textbook this revised textbook no yeah so it's not written here that's why i was checking so in the revised textbook you have it in page number 92 okay the question is solve 30x less than 200 this was the first statement that we saw if you remember the travis example he had 200 rupees 3x uh, so this they gave it as a problem so 30x is less than 200 so when first is x is a natural number and second is when x is an integer right that is what they are asking so what we need to do is we need to solve this inequality so that in the first case x only takes the natural number in the second case x takes the integer values right so the solution is observe what we need to do to solve the problems is you need to follow only those two rules what are the two rules you can add or subtract you can add or subtract any number you want on both the sides but it should be of the same value so inequality will not change you can multiply with positive number on both the sides so that the inequality is not changed you can multiply or divide whereas if you multiply or divide with a negative number inequality changes these two rules you keep in your mind you can solve any problem okay in this case if you observe i don't need any negative numbers in the first place so 30x is less than 200 this is given so what i need to do is i need to take the 30 to the other side generally it is not like equation where you take 30 to the other side what you need to mention is divide with 30 on both sides basically whatever is the variable you need to look at the coefficient based on the coefficient you need to multiply or divide okay in this case divide with 30 on both the sides so if i do that x will be less than 200 by 30 which is going to be 6.67 so for the first case if i have to write x as an integer sorry x as a natural number x will be equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 because x is less than 6.67 what are all the natural numbers less than 6.67 1 to 6 suppose they say that x is an integer then what is the set going to be x will be equal to it starts from minus infinity then what you can write is minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 basically it's an infinite set right okay so you can write it in this way did you understand So let me know if I can proceed. Shall we proceed? so the second question is example number 2 is solve 5x minus 3 is less than 3x plus 1 when first case x is integer and the second case is x is real number right 
the question is 5x minus 3 is less than 3x plus 1. 5x minus 3, correct. So if you observe the solution, 5x minus 3 is less than 3x plus 1. So what is that we need to do? We need to bring x to one side, constants to the other side. Right. So if I want 3x to come this side, what should I do? I need to subtract 3x on both the sides. So 5x minus 3, can I write minus 3x is less than 3x plus 1 minus 3x. Basically, I'm subtracting 3x on both the sides. So what did I follow here? I followed the rule number 1. So when I do this, 5x minus 3x is going to be 2x minus 3 is less than 3x and 3x will get cancelled. It is 1. So what should I do to take the 3 minus 3 to the other side? Add 3 on both sides. See, these things are important for the steps. Okay. So when you add the 2x minus 3 plus 3 is less than 1 plus 3. What rule did I follow? Here also rule number 1. So when I do this, 3 and 3 will get cancelled. 2x is less than 4. So I need 2 to go to the other side. Divide divide by 2 on both sides. What is it? It is rule number 2. When I do this, x will be less than 4 by 2 is going to be 2. So x is less than 2 basically. So for the first case, if it is going to be integer, then x will be equal to dot 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 minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2. Oh, it is only till 1 because x is strictly less than 2. So if you take only till 1. Right. Similarly, second case is x is a real number. So x belongs to x is less than 2 means it is from minus infinity to 2 open bracket. Remember one thing, this and this do not mean the same. <coughs> Included. I am saying this and this are not same. That is one confusion. No, no, no. So, you may think here also you are starting with minus infinity. You didn't include 2. So, this and this should be the same. But they are not same because, can you tell me? Yes. They also consist of rational and irrational numbers. Here you are considering only integers. So, it is a disjoint value. Between after minus 2, the next value you have is minus 1. So, don't get confused. And if you write the answer like this as minus infinity to 2 for this and ask for marks, is wrong. Be careful for, with it. Okay. So I can just make a note of it. Okay. Shall we proceed? One minute. So you can try the next one. The question, I'll write the question and go. So example number three, solve 4x plus 3 is less than 6x plus 7. Okay. So wait, I'll write the next one also. Fourth one is solve. 5 minus 2x, the whole divided by 3, is less than or equal to x by 6 minus 5. So, solve this. 
Okay. Shall we proceed? So, if you look at example number three, we need to take x values to one side and the constants to the other side. So here it's 6x six, six and 4x is there, which one later obviously 6x. Six, six. So I'll try to take 4x to the other side. For that, you need to subtract 4x on both the sides. Similarly, now going forward, what we'll do, we'll follow both the rules in the same step. Or at least not even, so not both the rules, at least rule one for both variables and constants. So what I'm going to do is 4x plus 3 here less than 6x plus 7 is there. No. I'll subtract 4x. Right. And I'll subtract 3 also. Right. So 4x minus 4x is gone. 3x. Sorry, 3 minus 3 is 0. So 0 less than or equal to. I'm sorry, wait. I'm sorry, wait, wait, wait. What we can do is. Since I want constants on one of the sides. No, no, no. 
So if three is there, no. So what I will do is I will take seven to this side. So I will subtract seven on both these things. Because see, listen, I, I need one, one side, I need variable, one side, I need a constant. So with respect to variable, I will subtract the smaller one. With respect to constant, I'll subtract the bigger one. Yeah, it's up to you. you can do that. So three minus seven is minus four, less than seven and seven are gone. Six x minus four x is going to be two x. So what you can do here? Divide it with two on both the sides. So minus two is less than. Minus 2 is less than x. Since you divide it with a positive number, inequality doesn't change. So x is greater than minus 2. So answer will be minus 2 to infinity. That's the answer. Because here they didn't mention anything about integers. So it is going to be real numbers. So it is from minus 2 to infinity. Make sense? Right. Now, having said this, yeah. so having said this, look at this problem. Here, what we can do is, can I write phi can I write phi minus 2x by 3 is less than or equal to x minus 30 divided by 6. Right. So x minus 30 divided by 6. Since I have 6 this side, what I'll do is I'll multiply and divide it to 2 here. If I do that, I'll get 10 minus 4x divided by 6 is less than or equal to x minus 30 divided by 6. So what will be the next step? Multiply with 6 on both the sides. When you multiply with 6 on both the sides, 6 and 6 will get cancelled. So numerators will follow the inequality. 10 minus 4x is less than or equal to x minus 30. So whenever you have a problem like this, where you have variable and constant, subtract the lower variable on both the sides and greater constant on both the sides, right? So here, what are the lesser variable? Minus 4x. So out of x and minus 4x, minus 4x is small. So since I have minus 4x, I'll add 4x on both the sides. So 10 minus 4x, plus 4x less than or equal to x minus 30 plus 4x. And what should I subtract? With respect to constant, I will subtract the bigger one out of 10 and minus 30, which is bigger, 10. So I'll subtract that. Sorry, 10 and minus. Okay. If I look at the magnitudes 10 and minus 30, so 30 is bigger. So I'll add 30 on both the sides. If I add 30 on both the sides, see, first of all, 4x and 4x will get cancelled. If I add 30 on both the sides, this will be less than or equal to 5x minus 30 plus 30. 30 and 30 are gone. So 5x will be greater than or equal to, or I'll write it like this. Since you're seeing it for the first time, I'll tell you. So 40 less than or equal to 5x divided with 5 on both the sides. So what will you get? 8 less than or equal to x, which implies x belongs to 8 to infinity, 8 to infinity, where 8 is included, infinity is not in. Yeah. I hope you could understand this. Right. See, there are multiple ways to solve this. If you get the same answer by doing it any other way, it is still acceptable. I am just sharing my thoughts. I hope it is clear, right? No confusion. Yeah. So you subtracted minus six, so minus two x is less than four. You didn't get the answer. You didn't get the answer because you subtracted six x on both the sides, but you didn't subtract three on both the sides. You wrote it, but you didn't subtract. Where is minus three here? Yeah, we, the whole idea is getting constant on one side, variable. So that is why what I do is, with respect to variable, subtract the smaller variable. With respect to constant, subtract the bigger, subtract or add the bigger constant. With respect to this problem, if I look at the constant, the magnitude is 30. 
Whereas with respect to variable, I took the sign also into consideration. Yeah. What is the answer? X is greater than minus two, no? To what you did is Steve. You got the step, no, minus two X. Uh, less than four, no. When you divide it with minus two on both the sides, x minus two. That's it. That's what we're talking about. Got it? Shall I proceed? Variables on the left hand side. Not necessary. Not necessary. That's why it, I, I was very clear. I didn't tell you variables on left hand side, constants on right hand side. I, you only use the word variables on one side, constants on one side. That is, that is one way to have that unnecessary overstep extra. Ever. See, as long as you are able to understand that x is greater than minus 2, whether x is there on the left hand side or right hand side, you are right. See, if they are particular in school, then go with that method, but still the concept is the same. That cannot be changed. Right. Shall I proceed? So, the fifth question here is solve. 7x plus 3 less than 5x plus 9. Okay. Also, show the graph. Show the graph of the solutions on number line. Show the graph of the solutions on the number line. Okay. So 7x plus 3 is less than 5x plus 9. It's again simple. What did I say? Subtract the lesser variable. So 7x plus 3, 5x is there. So minus 5x less than 5x plus 9 minus 5x. Cancel this sentence. So you'll get 7x minus 2 less than 9. No? Okay, sorry. Correction. So it is going to be 2x plus 3 less than 9. So in this problem, what are we going to do? So in this problem, you can take 3 to the other side. So 2x plus 3, subtract 3, less than 9 minus 3. Cancel this. So 2x is less than 6. So x will be less than 3. Inequality doesn't change. So answer is going to be minus infinity to 3, open bracket. Is that clear? So it's going to be minus infinity to three open. Shall I proceed? Have a doubt? Oh, sorry, we didn't draw the graph. No? Yeah. Oh, so listen, x belongs to minus infinity to 3. We need to draw the graph for this on a number line. Okay, you take a number line, draw 0, 1, 2, 3. So x belongs to minus infinity to 3 means see whenever you have an open bracket no i want everybody to listen to this listen to this carefully so when you have a closed bracket 
so for closed bracket on a number line you use a complete circle like this and for an open bracket you will use an open circle like this so here what you will do is you will use an open circle for three because that is not included on the left hand side what will you do all the values are considered so this is how you are going to represent it on a number is it clear Shall I proceed? So, example number six. Solve three x minus four divided by two is greater than or equal to x plus one divided by four minus one. Show the graph of the solutions on the number line. So again, you need to show the graph on number line. Okay. Now, having said this, if you observe three x minus four divided by, since I have a four here, what I'll do is I'll multiply and divide the um, function here with two. So it is going to be six x minus eight divided by four. Yeah, that also you can do after you take LCM. So both are same. So greater than or equal to x plus one minus four divided by four. Right. Now what you can do multiply with four on both the sides. When you multiply with four on both the sides, four and four get cancelled. So you'll be left out with six x minus eight greater than or equal to x minus three. So I'll bring the lesser value to the left hand side. So I'm going to subtract x on both the sides. So six x minus eight minus x is greater than or equal to x minus three minus x. X and x are gone. Six x minus x is five x minus eight is greater than or equal to minus three. You will add eight on both the sides because I want the variable to go to the other side. So five x minus eight plus eight is greater than or equal to minus three plus eight. This and this are gone. So five x is greater than or equal to five. So x is going to be greater than or equal to one. So answer will be one to infinity. So when you look at the same on a number line, how is it going to be? Zero, one, two, three, so on is there? No, right? When you have this, when you have this from one, one is included. Sorry. What is happening? Okay. See, since one is included, you will take a complete dot here, and from here onwards, you need to draw the line like this. Is the point clear? So this is how it works. So this is the meaning of one to infinity. Numerator and denominator with two. I I took LCM. Yeah, yeah. See, as long as you are multiplying, dividing on the same side, it doesn't affect the other side. No? For example, I can say I multiplied and divided with two, or I multiplied and divided with minus two also. It doesn't make any difference because minus and minus will get cancelled. Okay. Okay, next is a statement problem. Those who are online, are you able to understand? Yes, so listen.
See, seventh is a statement problem. The marks obtained by a student of class 11 in first and second terminal examinations are 62 and 48. So terminal 1, it is 62 and terminal 2, it is 48. These are the marks obtained by your 11th grade student in the first and the second terminal examination. Right. Find the minimum marks he should get in the annual examination to get an average of at least 60 marks. So, what should be the value of marks that he should score in the annual exam so that the average is at least 60? So, this word is very important. At least 60. Meaning, so what should be at least 60? It is the average. Average of what? Average of these three exams. So, 62 plus 48 plus the third exam, the whole divided by 3 should be greater than or equal to. So, at least means what? It should at least be 60 or greater than 60. Suppose they use the word at most 60. So, maximum should be 60. At most, if they use it, it is maximum 60. So, there you should use less than or equal. To. Are you able to understand this? Right? So, here it is going to be greater than or equal to 60. So, multiply with 3 on both the sides. What will you get? First of all, 62 plus 48 is going to be how much? 10. So, it is going to be 110. So, 110 plus 110 plus x is greater than or equal to 180. So, x should be greater than or equal to 70. So, the minimum marks he is supposed to score in the annual exam is 70 to get an average of 60. Why did that happen? If you see the first exam, he has got greater than 60, but the second has dipped. Right? So, that gets compensated. So, you should get more than... Uh, greater than or equal to 70 marks, right? At most means less than or equal. I hope you are able to understand. Simple actually. Shall we proceed? Yeah. So let's go to the eighth one. In the eighth example, the question says, listen to this carefully, find all pairs of consecutive odd natural numbers. So find all pairs of consecutive odd natural numbers, both of which are larger than 10 such that their sum is less than 40. So, what do we need to find? We need to find pair of or pair of consecutive odd natural numbers. So, so, both of which are, so both the numbers should be larger than 10 such that their sum is less than 40. So, what is, if you, if you say the odd numbers are, what will the odd numbers be like? If I say the first odd number is x, the second odd number should be b. If you write x plus 1, you are wrong. If x plus 2. So, it is going to be x plus 2. So, what should be the minimum value of x? So, they are saying both of which are larger than 10. So, x should be greater than 10. Right? When x is greater than 10, what is the first odd number that you are going to find? So, it is going to be 11. Right? So, but we need to solve it using inequality. So, x is greater than 10 is one such inequality. And what is the second inequality? The sum of these two numbers should be less than 40. So, x plus x plus 2 should be less than 40. Did you understand why I wrote it in bracket? Right? So, what will happen? It will be 2x plus 2 is less than 40. So, 2x is less than. So, adding... Uh, subtracting 2 on both the sides, it is 38. So, x will be less than 19. So, what is the first number? So, x should be greater than 10. 
X should be greater and X should be less than 90. So basically X should belong to 10 to 19. Okay. But I should not write it like this because they only spoke about natural numbers, right? So I should not write it in this way. So what will be the number? So can you tell me the set of Can you tell me the set of numbers? 11, 13, 13, 15, 15, 17. 17, 19 is not possible because it is not equal. Okay. They told less than, no? Yeah, less than this. Thing. Yeah, yeah. 17, 19 is possible. But here they mentioned it as less than 40, no? So 17 and 19 are also possible. For some, some should be less than 14. The sum of those two numbers, some of these two numbers should be less than 14. That is why actually, actually 17, 19, according to me, should not come. I don't know why they gave it in the problem. 17, 19 should not come down because we are saying X is less than 19. We are saying the inequality says X is less than 19. No? After 19, 19, 19, 19 is not a part of this. But if they take X as 17, then X plus 2 will be 19. Sorry, correct. It is correct. I'm sorry, it is my mistake. It is correct because, listen, this is X, this is X plus 2. Yes, yes. X value should be, so this is X and X plus 2. So 19 can come. Yeah, 19 you cannot take. 19, 21 you cannot take. Though 19 and 21 will come to, it will be 40 exactly, but you cannot take it. Because the first number, when you are writing the ordered pair, because if you look at the question, no, they ask it very clearly. Find all pairs. What pairs? Ordered pairs. So we wrote it in the form of ordered pairs such that X and X plus 2 form the ordered pair. So what are the conditions we got? X should be less than 19. So we wrote X less than 19. Only. That is 17. But X plus 2 coming out with 19 is accepted. That got moved actually. Okay, shall I proceed to the next one? So, after this, we have exercise 5.1 only. See, 5.1, I'm believing that. Uh, First 16 problems, not 16, at least first 10 problems, you can do it on your own. Okay. So I'm not doing them from 11th onwards. We'll see. So let's look at exercise 5.1. We'll start with the 11th problem. So we need to solve the inequality where it says, 3 into x minus 2 divided by 5 is less than or equal to 5 into 2 minus x divided by 3. So this is what we need to solve. So what can we do? Actually, what you can do is 
you can multiply with 15 on both the sides because lcm of 5 and 3 is going to be 15 so multiply with 15 on both sides when you do this what will you get you will get 3 here so 3 into 3 9 x minus 18 see i directly wrote it i want you all to observe so when it 15 comes here 5 cancels 15 3 times so 3 into 3 9 it is 9x minus 18, right? Less than or equal to here, what will I get? I'll get 5. So 5 into 5, 25. So 25 into 2, 50 minus 5x. 50 minus 5x, right? So what I should do is add 5x on both the sides. So 9x minus 18 plus 5x less than or equal to 50 minus 5x plus 5x. So 5x and 5x got cancelled. 9x plus 5x is 14x. So add 18 on both the sides. So less than or equal to 50 plus 18 is going to be 68. Correct. 50 plus 18 is 68. So x is less than or equal to 68 by 14. So it is going to be 34 divided by 7. That's it, no? So it is going to be 34 divided by 7. So x belongs to minus infinity to 34 by 7 included. So minus infinity to 34 by 7 included. Is the point clear? The solution the answer is the eleventh problem, madam. Minus infinity to two r. Or check for nullity. Check for nullity. So nine x minus eighteen. Question correct, madam. Why five x minus five x? Give them yeah. that was a mess. Correct. Just 25, no. Correct. Yeah. So we need to there is a correction. So it is going to be 50 minus 25 into x is going to be 25 x. So we need to add 25 x on both the sides. So when you add 25 x to 9 x, it is going to be 34 x is less than or equal to 50. Add 18 on both the sides, it's going to be 68. So x less than or equal to 2. So the answer will be yes. Why open? Minus infinity to 2. Okay, minus infinity by default, it's open. Huh? You need not tell that. Yeah, that's why I cut it. Yeah. So minus infinity to 2. Okay. So this is where we made, we made a mistake. Shall I proceed? Yeah. So, twelfth one, it's going to be half into yeah. for twelfth question, it is half into three x by five plus four greater than or equal to 1 by 3 into x minus 6. Solve this.
how to proceed multiply with 6 on both the sides that is lcm no so when you multiply with 6 here the numerator will become 3 so 3 into 3x by 5 is 9x by 5 plus 3 into 4 is 12 greater than or equal to here it will become 2 so it will be 2x minus 12 so basically we multiply it with 6 on both the sides why did we do that because lcm of 2 and 3 is going to come out as 6 okay so add 12 on both the sides 9x by 5 what we can do is subtract 2x on both the sides greater than or equal to 2x minus 12 minus 2x 2x and 2x will get cancelled so here what will you get you will get minus x divided by 5 so there is a plus 12 here by the way this 12 is there okay so 9x by 5 minus 2x is minus x by 5 add 12 on both the sides sorry you need to subtract 12 on both the sides when you subtract 12 on both the sides this will be greater than or equal to minus 20 did you understand what i did when you subtract 12 on both the sides this side 12 will get cancelled and this side minus 12 will get added to minus 12 it will be minus 24 so here minus x by 5 is greater than or equal to minus 24 so when i multiply with minus on both the sides inequality will change so x by 5 will be less than or equal to 24 i multiplied with minus on both the sides so again we need to multiply with 5 on both the sides so when you multiply with 5 on both the sides this comes out to be in such a way that x is less than or equal to 120 so x belongs to minus infinity to 120 where 120 is going to have a close bracket clear with this right see this whole exercise is the same pattern even the statement based problems i am assuming that you yourself can solve it fast okay there is nothing tough about it so for this week i want you to complete 5.1 okay and we'll do few problems on miscellaneous in the next class and there are some important chapters like permutation, combination, and arithmetic progression. It will take some time. Okay, we'll concentrate more on them. So next class, I'll start with. Okay. So work on this and come. Only percentage problem, example number 13 is there in mysterious. Those kind of problems, 12, 13, that I will explain in the next steps. Okay. Others you guys can try. So those who are online, are you clear? So I hope you could understand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So see, actually the chapter's concept is over. It's up to you to solve it. Okay. Okay. Yes. So if there are no questions, we can wind up. No questions. Yeah, we can wind up. Yeah. Thank you, sir.